expectations of where we will be in the future affects our happiness today. What's your view on manifestation? Is it true? Yeah, so it's not magic. The reason if you believe something, the likely that it will happen is higher is because you then change your actions. About 30% of how optimistic we are is genetically determined. This has been shown from uh, twin studies, but that still leaves two thirds, right? One interesting thing that, that has been found is that optimists are more likely to be entrepreneurs. Optimists, this is what they usually do. If something went well, something about them that caused this positive outcome, pessimists do the exact opposite. Good thing happened, I got the job, but really because they didn't have any other candidates. Is that negative explanatory style the road to depression? There's a really tight link between depression and pessimism. So the question becomes, well, how do I enhance optimism? So there's a few ways to do it. So I'm a cognitive neuroscientist. I put together psychology, neuroscience, and behavioral economics, and I mix it up. I bring people into my lab and I try to understand the brain mechanisms that give rise to how people act every day, how they interact, how they make decisions. I'm going to talk to you about optimism. Optimism is, is believing that, that some, you know, that positive things will happen. The optimism bias means that you believe these optimistic things, that these good things will happen, but the evidence suggests otherwise. So it's, it's actually a mistake, right? The optimism bias. So usually we define it as overestimating the likelihood of positive events happening. Mm -hmm. So you're overestimating um, how much money am I going to get with my first job when I leave uh, graduate school, right? Or overestimating like how long my marriage will last. Um, and so on. So overestimating the positive in light of the evidence that is in front of us um, and underestimating the likelihood of negative events happening. So I'm underestimating my likelihood of getting COVID, of getting cancer, of being in a car accident, going bankrupt, whatever it is, based on whatever evidence is, is there. So optimism bias does mean mistake. So the word bias means a systematic mistake. So obviously when we think about the future, we can't be right most of the time because the future is uncertain and we don't know what's going to happen so we're going to be wrong a lot of the times when we predict the future but the optimism bias means that the mistakes that we make tend to systematically be that we expect it to be better than it ends up being so that's basically the optimism bias right i expect it to be better than it ends up being which sounds like a bad thing but it's not necessarily so it can actually have both positive and negative outcomes to it so if you think about the positive if I expect good things in my future, specifically good things, even though I'm overestimating the likelihood of these things happening, even if I think, oh, I'm, you know, I'm going to make 1 million in the next year. And of course, that's way more than I'm going to. But that then motivates you, right? So having these positive expectations motivates you to try harder. It's a bit like I think I'm going to get the gold. I'm more likely to get the silver. So that's kind of the idea. And it also enhances your happiness and well-being, right? Because how you're feeling now is a lot to do not necessarily with what you're doing at the moment but what you think you'll be doing later a lot of it is what do i think i'm going to do later on this evening next week next month in a year our expectations of where we will be in the future affects our happiness today and so if i have these positive expectations of the future even if they're not going to happen they make me happier today this is why there's a really cool study that was done at harvard where they were asking people who are about to go on vacation how happy they were every day before vacation then have every day during vacation and every day after vacation for a week so a week before vacation every day a week during vacation every day a week after vacation every day so what was the happiest day do you think the day before they went right exactly right the day before vacation they were still in the office right working on the computers but on their mind, they were already on vacation. In their mind, it was wonderful. And when they went on vacation, it was good, but it wasn't as good as it was in their mind the day before. So it's the anticipation of these goods. So it's an optimism bias because they thought the vacation is going to be better than what it ended up being, but that brought them the happiness before and also probably enhanced the likelihood that they will go on vacation, which is a good thing. So it's good to kind of enhance kind of the, the expectations and also to have these things that people can look forward to. And of course, it works the other way. So also, if you're dreading something or whatever bad thing is happening, it's going to affect your mood today. So dread of things in the future and anticipation of the good stuff is all affecting how we feel at the moment. And it kind of, kind of um, makes me think about this concept of manifestation. People always talk about manifestation. In my mind, always been this kind of pseudo -y, you just think about something and then it happens. What's your view on manifestation? Is it true? Yeah. So it's not magic. It's not that 
I'm thinking something in my mind and the waves are going to change what happens in the world. The reason if you believe something, the likely that it will happen is higher is because you then change your actions, right? I think, you know, my startup is going to really succeed. And that then changes your actions. You're more likely to go out there and tell other people, right? So if you think it's going to succeed, you're more likely to convey that information to investors and so on. They can see your, your kind of confidence. They'll be more likely to invest in you, right? You put more time in, you put more effort in, and that's why it can have an effect on the, the outcomes. So it's not kind of a magic kind of thing. It's just that what we believe in our mind changes the way we behave and the way we behave in the world changes the world. First of all, I just want to mention that about 30% of how optimistic we are is genetically determined. This has been shown from uh, twin studies, but that still leaves two thirds, right? Mm -hmm. So optimists, this is what they usually do. If something happened and it went well, right? You sold your startup for a lot of money, you had a project and it was successful. They usually interpret that as meaning that they, it's, it's personally, it's something about them that caused this positive outcome, right? And it is something in them that's quite permanent. Let's say my project went well because I'm a hard worker, right? And, you know, maybe I'm intelligent or whatever. And then they say, well, if I have those skills, that means that a lot of other things are going to work well in life. When something negative happens, they tend to do the opposite. They tend to see it as circumstantial, right? This negative thing happened. Okay, so I didn't put a lot of effort in this but not because I'm not a hard worker. I just didn't put enough effort because I was distracted by something else or, you know, this other person just happened to have a better proposal. So it's circumstantial. That means that they don't take that as evidence of how am I going to perform in the future, right? So it's a really different interpretation of negative outcomes and positive outcomes. And then pessimists do the exact opposite. When something bad happens, they say, this bad thing happened because of me, because of a trait that I have, and because I have this trait, let's say I'm bad with people, that's gonna affect all the rest of my life and all these future projects. When something good happened, it's circumstantial. Good thing happened, I got the job, but really because they didn't have any other candidates. The best studies on this comes probably from Martin Seligman, where he actually did experiments where he got people who were somewhat pessimistic, even slightly depressed. And the approach that he took is to change the inter what he calls inter interpretation style. So what Martin Seligman did is he taught people this interpretation style. So he taught them whenever something good happens, this is how you have to think about it. You have to think about it. what is it about you that caused this positive thing to happen, right? And how is that positive trait or whatever skill, whatever thing you did, how can it affect other parts of your life and other future outcomes? And the opposite for negative. If something negative happened, I don't mean it don't take responsibility, but are there circumstantial, right? It could be something that you did, but it doesn't have to be permanent, right? So he teaches them, the, the people to kind of interpret this, to find these reasons for the positive and negative, and it seemed to work to some extent. Now, it's difficult. I'm, I, you know, it's not easy to turn a pessimist into an optimist but it had some effect on their well-being and even on their physical health as a result. Is that negative explanatory style of saying, okay, this bad thing happened, it's because of me, it's because I'm not good enough, whatever, mm -hmm. is that the road to depression? Yeah, so there's a really tight link between depression and pessimism. So pessimism is a symptom of depression. It's an actual symptom. And so what we see is people with severe depression have a pessimistic bias. They expect the future to be worse than it ends up being and worse than the evidence in front of them is. People with mild depression have no bias at all. This doesn't mean they're accurate. They can make mistakes, but on both sides. So sometimes they expect things to be better. Sometimes they expect things to be worse, but overall they, they don't have a, a bias. But what's the difference between hope and optimism? So hope is you want something to happen in the future, right? I want to get that job. I want to find that relationship. Optimism is believing that I'm likely to get that job. I'm likely to find that wonderful relationship. And it's absolutely true that if you're optimistic, you think this is gonna go somewhere good, then you're more likely to, to go ahead and try that, which makes sense, right? Because mm -hmm. my expectation is gonna change my actions and my actions is gonna change my outcomes, right? And then the question becomes, well, how do I enhance optimism? Right. And that's it's a good idea because enhancing optimism will cause you to take more risk. <laughs> so there's a few ways to do it. One way is a sense of control. We are more optimistic about things that we believe we have control over because we do think that when we have control, that means we can steer the wheel in the right direction. And so um, if we can uh, cause people to get a sense that they have control and if it's about your team is, for example, let's say they 
there's a project that you want someone to work on. So you can just tell them to do that project or you can have them choose to do that project and you can guide them to the choice that you think is correct. But if they believe that they made the choice, that enhances a sense of agency, enhances a change of the sense of control and they become more committed to that option. One interesting thing that that has been found is that optimists are more likely to be entrepreneurs. There's, I mean, that is quite clear, you know? And again, we don't know, is it because I'm optimistic that I'm more likely to be an entrepreneur or is it something about being an entrepreneur that makes me more optimistic? But what they found is after you become an entrepreneur, you become even more optimistic. Yeah. Right? So that suggests that there is something, it is true that optimistic people are more likely to take a chance, more likely to take a risk and therefore more likely to be entrepreneurs. And that experience of doing that enhances your optimism further. And I think even if you fail, you still gained evidence that you were able to try something new. So if you're able to get people to have these kind of um, experiences, that then causes them to become more confident, that will then enhance their optimism.